Good morning. I've just finished today's kettlebell workout and I thought rather than huffing and puffing the way through it, I would do a little bit of commentary over the top of it. So, um, to get things started, we're just going to start with some very simple alternate swings. The idea of this is I'm using a light kettlebell and I'm going to try to keep a flow going, which is a current trendy word for meaning don't stop. Okay, which we've, I've been doing for a while, but... Uh, it's all about the flow state at the moment, apparently. It's what the cool kids are doing. So the idea is I'm picking up a light kettlebell, 16 kilos, and I'm just not going to put it down for somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes. I think today's workout took about 13 and a half, 14 minutes in total. Um, I started with some outside swings, nice and easy, just to start to get my shoulders warmed up and start to bring my heart rate up. And you can see I've added now is just a step back on the opposite leg that's got the kettlebell in. I'm not really thinking any of this through. It isn't planned, uh, but I've been doing kettlebells for a long time now. The idea is 16 kilos and don't stop. So what I've got here is an outside clean to catch, okay? It's probably got a proper name, but again, it's just get my elbows warmed up, get my bicep tendon warmed up, which is put under a lot of strain and stress throughout using regular kettlebells, even on normal swings. And again, I'm just starting to get warmed up. I'm not hinging much on this. Most of the movement's coming from my elbow and most of the momentum's coming from that back swing now on the kettlebell to then sort of bring it back up again. I'm not curling it. It's definitely a swing to get it back into position. I'm not counting the reps really. Uh, I think in the back of my head, I'm doing about 10 reps on most things. Uh, unless it feels hard, in which case I'll probably half that and do five. Uh, as a personal trainer, I'm trained to count to five or ten. Everything else is very confusing. Okay, so I've transitioned into some alternate swings now. And again, still getting warmed up, but I've started to add a hinge. I'm not twisting much at the moment, and my free hand isn't coming behind me much at the moment, because I'm still getting warmed up, stretching out the hamstrings there we go a little bit more of a rotation now and just keeping the bell swinging the idea is on this workout as i said just don't stop you can try to keep up with me if you want to um which is no great uh credit to you if you manage it um but the idea is try to follow it loosely and adapt the exercises to suit again this isn't a planned workout it's a flow pick it up and just keep moving Throughout this entire workout, my feet barely move. So I've changed into cleans now. I think the kettlebell clean might be up there with some of my favorite exercises. Um, I think it's just a really interesting exercise. A lot of stuff happens. You're taking your the kettlebell from your outside of your shoulder um, to your midline and then having to sort of pull it back again. All the power comes from the hip hinge. There's a lot of interesting things going on. I've done X amount of reps, probably 10-ish, and I'm swapping sides. And the idea with this, because it's being done for a long time, is it isn't at all at any point explosive or dynamic um, because this is cardio. It's just a cardio workout. So um, it's the same as going for a jog. I'm trying to hold a light to moderate level of intensity for a medium to long period of time uh, into presses. Um, cleans might be one of my favorite exercises, but I think definitely overhead pressing is my favorite exercise. Uh, there's something very satisfying about putting a heavy weight over your head. Not this is particularly heavy, but nevertheless, it feels good. It feels like a, a natural movement. Um, I love bench pressing because I'm quite good at it, uh, but there's nothing natural about a bench press where lifting something heavy over your head always feels like I'm connecting back to proper human movement. So I've got presses on one side, presses on the other side. I'm trying to make this work out symmetrical, um, which is another good thing about kettlebells. Um, when you're training bilaterally, both arms at the same time, for example, bench press or deadlifts or squats or barbell shoulder press, you're using both arms or both legs at the same time, which isn't how we work in nature. 
um, when you walk, run, uh, throw a punch, throw a rock, um, everything's done with a rotation. Oh, speaking of rotation, that's bang on time, look at that. So I'm adding a little bit of rotation into a clean now. So it's a rotation and a pendulum and then a clean. Twist, pendulum and clean. And the pendulum is to just let the weight swing down and its own momentum swings it back up again, back into a clean. So I'm letting the kettlebell do the work. I'm just adding some rotation. The rotation at the moment isn't loaded. Again, I'm just getting it nice and warmed up. Rotation's about as fundamental a human movement as you get. Uh, again, when we learn to move as babies, we first start to crawl, which is bilateral. Your right, your left knee comes forward and your right hand goes forward. At the same time, when we learn to walk, it's left foot goes forward, right arm swings forward. So everything is kind of bilateral. If you throw a rock or a spear or a punch, um, as your right hand comes out to throw the punch, your left hand comes back to help that rotation. And it's something that in all my years of lifting heavy weights, more in a sort of powerlifting style workout, you tend to untrain, you tend not to do quite as much. When I was doing a lot more martial arts, of course, rotation's at the very heart of what you do. But I teach that now, I tend not to do it so much. So I've changed the exercise now. So this is still a pendulum into a clean, but this time it's an outside pendulum. So it's a longer swing than I'm catching it on a rotation. So I'm catching it on a rotation. And it's a nice long swing. And I'm allowing it to sort of, the weight to pull my arm forward and I'm sitting back uh, into that right hip just to sort of stretch it out. And again, this is all just play. Um, I saw some nice videos um, on, oh God, I put in the show notes the guy's name and he was uh, doing uh, outside swings and inside swings and inside cleans and outside cleans and some pendulums. And I've done these before, but it's been a while. You can see on my left side, it's not as smooth uh, as my right side, the movements not as fast as ballistic. So it's a coordination issue on my left side, but it's all good practice. Um, what you do on a daily basis doesn't matter, but you gotta move, you gotta do something. And I think if you just want to put in some daily movement, uh, it's hard to beat something that is unilateral. So you're training one side and then the next side. So you go in the twist, this time the twist is coming into the press. And weirdly, it makes it a lot harder, having to stabilize that weight. So I've got a couple of strict presses. At this point, I'm probably doing the strict presses to catch my breath. And then into the rotation on this one. Good. And you can't quite see my feet uh, on this recording, but I am twisting my feet as I rotate my hips and trunk as well. What am I doing here? Okay, so clean and press, and then I go into a, a clean and twist press. So it's three of these, if I remember correctly. And then it's clean and twist press. Good. So obviously the training implications from martial arts is fairly obvious. You know, you're rotating and trying to deliver something with some force and some power. Obviously, you're not doing it with the same speed you throw a punch. That's why you still got to throw punches. But it's good practice for that rotation force, turning the shoulder and the hip and the knee at the same time. That's good. Not bad. What do we do next? Okay. There we go. So full 180 rotation now. So we're twisting one way on the pendulum and twisting all the way through on the clean and the press. So we've got 180 degrees of rotation. And again, as my shoulders move, my hips move, as my hips move, my knees move. Um, and then as my knees move, my feet twist as well. I'm turning on the ball of my foot, not the heel, just like you would if you threw a punch or a kick. Twist and press. Pendulum, clean, twist, and press. 180 degrees of rotation. 
to get it all done. Okay. Um, how much should you be training at the moment? That's completely up to you. But I think you need to be able to get your heart rate up to a decent level for 15 to 30 minutes every single day. How you do that is completely up to you. Um, I honestly believe that going for a long walk is one of the best things for your health. Uh, you can do whatever the word health means. But I think it's a fantastic reset. Uh, a lot of people stroll with their hands in their pockets, slouched over. Um, but if you can uh, just release your arms and swing your arms as you're walking, you get some fantastic rotation happening uh, through your lower back and you're engaging your ab muscles and you're using your glutes much, much better. Um, so walking is my number one exercise for something to do every single day. Um, but of course, unless you're walking up the side of mountains uh, with very heavy packs for a very long time, it's I wouldn't call it exercise as such. It's definitely physical activity. Um, my next thing to go to there would be strength training. I think it's important to have a strong body. Um, and the best ways to get strong is with the basic barbell lifts, the squat, the deadlift, the shoulder press and the bench press. Those four, I think, are essential. And then you can add to that chin-ups, definitely. Um, chuck in something for your arms, like lying tricep extensions uh, and some heavy barbell curls. Uh, throw in something for your abs. Um, I'm not a fan of sit-ups particularly, but I do like... Actually, I don't like... I hate planks, but I see their merit. Um, but I quite like the ab wheel rollout to really hit the abs hard. Um, and I think if you've got that covered, you've covered everything. And then on top of that, you've got your fun stuff. So walking every day for just general health, strength training two to three times a week, and then fun stuff. And the fun stuff for me is things like kettlebells and uh, hitting pads. Uh, and that gets the rotation stuff done. It gets a much higher spike to my heart rate than I'd get from walking. Uh, I'm too damn heavy and too damn old uh, to do any running um, for long distances. And if I sprinted, I would just tear my calves off the bone. Um, but the kettlebells is a great way for me to spike my heart rate up. And it makes you strong in a slightly different way. Not in a... There's no way doing kettlebell swings will... Uh, positively affect my deadlift, uh, not at the point of lifting that I'm at. Uh, would it help a beginner's deadlift? Absolutely. But then going for a bike ride would affect a beginner's deadlift positively. You're a beginner. Everything works. But I think for us old sea dogs, um, the kettlebell is used as a nice reset for the body. It's a great way to get some volume in. For me, I find it fun. Um, I did it today without my headphones on so I could record at the same time. But it's the sort of thing I'd put on a, an old favourite album. Uh, for me, it'd be Black Sabbath, Masters of Reality, or Black Sabbath Volume 4, or Black Sabbath Sabotage. Basically, those Black Sabbath albums. Um, and I would just lose myself in the music. i just try to keep going for some time. 10, 15, 20 minutes. Um, and I think it's just a nice, almost meditative, hypnotic style workout and finally i'm finished exercising and now i can shut up talking enjoy yourselves guys keep safe keep strong speak to you soon bye bye